Hello and welcome to the Autodesk Advanced Manufacturing Summit. My name is Ian Pendlebury. I run the engineering team at Autodesk responsible for all our manufacturing related products. So that would be products like Moleflow, NetFab, PowerMill and Fusion 360. I'm based in the Portland office in Oregon. I came to Autodesk uh, around 12 years ago when Moleflow was acquired by Autodesk and I worked at Moleflow for around 23 years prior to that in the engineering team in the R&D facility, mainly in Australia. So injection molding has been a big part of my career. Uh, it still is, um, but now more recently, I'm involved in machining technology and additive technology. So virtual summits are probably new to a lot of people, but we're eager for you to explore these different sessions we have and the opportunities in the breakout sessions we have planned for you this week. I've attended a virtual summit this year already, and my personal tip is don't try and fit it into your normal day. Block out some time to give it justice. So this year, like I said, it will be available online so you can watch the recordings later. So I hope you enjoy the new format and the new tracks that we've put together for you. Right now, there are major trends emerging in the market that are impacting and reshaping manufacturing. Products are getting smarter, demand for customization from customers is increasing and economic trends are testing the supply chain. If you're a manufacturer of any product, you should be thinking about the impact of these secular trends on your business and how you're going to respond. You either stay ahead or risk irrelevance. Manufacturing has changed and it's continuing to change. This has been evident, not just in terms of the changes in products, but how products are being made. Current events are demonstrating this. As we continue to work through this global pandemic, we've seen impacts on our supply chains and the ability to access goods. We've also seen businesses quickly retool and collaborate in ways they may have considered difficult or impossible previously to help with uh, personal protective equipment. So changing and adapting to these new needs shows how we need to quickly be able to pivot and also that it's already possible if you're prepared. Looking at the plastics industry, there are three key trends that are appearing. First is the obvious and in many cases visible impact of plastics waste in the environment, driving the need for sustainable design and sustainable manufacture. Next, there's the need to get more and more performance out of the, and efficiency from the products that we make that's driving material choice and novel design approaches. And last is the trend that's been growing for some time, which is the use of technology to optimize and automate the whole design to manufacture process, including technologies like generative design, design for manufacture, new manufacturing processes and technologies, and manufacturing monitoring. This brings us to the idea that along with the inevitability of more and the reality of less is the opportunity for better by improving our tools and technologies, we can embrace the opportunities and overcome the challenges before us to build not just better products and manufacturing methods, but a better world for all of us. To overcome the challenges and achieve this better state, we're going to need more reliance on software and data, enabling automation and collaboration. Connecting the dots of how data flows is key in understanding how different roles and activities are impacted. Looking at the product development process, starting initial drawing and going all the way to the shop floor, there are various personas with different levels of expertise that are involved across the process. The connections and handoff between each persona creates overhead and potential for error today. Bringing them all together in a unified collaborative environment provides a single source of truth, minimizes error, and most importantly, unlocks the opportunity to introduce optimization and automation. It also allows each persona to focus just on what they do best, rather than interfacing communication, which is an overhead they have today. Many of you are already having success on this journey. One of the best customer, Three Dimensional Services Group, based in Rochester Hills, Michigan, is used to turning around prototypes and weld assemblies in short time scales. So when they were asked to help produce face shield headbands for healthcare workers on the front lines, 
of the COVID pandemic, they were able to quickly step up using technology like Autodesk Moleflow and Autodesk Power Mill for, for simulation and toolpath creation, all while adjusting to working remotely. Another customer, Panasonic Corporation Life Solutions Company, has used Autodesk Moleflow to explore using generative design technology to optimize their mold cooling channel design. And one last customer I want to highlight today is the injection molding machine manufacturer Angle. This company has already recognized the gaps that lie between these personas involved with the design and manufacturing process and have been started to use automation to merge the data from simulation to machine. You'll hear firsthand from Johannes Engel today as they'll kick off the injection molding track with their session on how and why they developed SimLink. I'd like to wrap up today by encouraging you to think about your current process and how you would use this summit to explore new possibilities. Listen to the sessions, get ideas from other people, get inspired. Look at how technology can help you on your journey, not just familiar products like Autodesk Moleflow, Autodesk Power Mill, but also take a look at Fusion 360 and see where we're going with that. It embodies many of the principles and addresses some of the challenges I just talked about. The question I'd like to leave you with is what could you do to be more efficient and create a better world? Thank you and enjoy the summit. Thanks, Ian. And now we'll turn it over to Dr. Johannes Killian, who will share how Angle is driving innovation through connecting data in manufacturing. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to this talk about connecting the two worlds, the virtual world and the real world. I want to point out four main points um, during my talk. The first of all is our vision. Our vision, where do we want to go? What's our vision of connecting two worlds? The second point is what is our way? Do, where do we come from? What is our solution? Um, how does Engel SimLink um, work and what's your benefit and what's the benefit of connecting two worlds and I want to end up with an appeal to you close the loop so let's jump into our vision of Inject 4.0 that's the industry 4.0 solution from Engel our vision is we want to enable our customers to design and produce their optimal injection molding parts with high quality and of course low costs. This sounds simple but it's, it's challenging because we open our um, vision from the production also of the whole product life cycle from the design and to the end of life. Um, of the injection molding parts. So we are focusing on the entire product life cycle of um, injection molding parts. So we start up with the idea of a product. You have an idea of a product you want to design, you design an article, you're thinking about designing a mold, you'll do some simulation maybe with mold flow and then you end up with the construction of, of the mold. This is all done more or less in the virtual vo um, world and then you step out of the virtual world into the real world and put the mold onto the machine, go for some trials, for some setups, do some optimization for the pilot series, for the production and end up with this process with the real production of the zero production of your part. The end of life, the tool is the last step of the mold. So we support our customers doing this entire process, um, doing the entire product life cycle, beginning from the idea up to the end of, um, end of life. 
And there's one main thing during this whole circle, this whole loop, a gapless data flow during the whole loop is necessary that we can really get all the benefit out of, um, out of the, the data during the whole process. So, um, but what's in reality? Actually, in reality, um, often the know-how or, um, or the experience or the information we get from the virtual world we not take into the real world. So there's a big data barrier between the orange world, the mold flow world, the Autodesk world, to the green world, to the angle world, for example. So this data barrier has the problem that no information from the virtual world gets into the real world. So you can't use the, sim um, the information from the simulation in the setup phase, for example. You can't get information from the, um, from the machine to increase or optimize your simulation. These optimizations can't get out automatically. And of course, during your simulation phase, you don't know the behavior of the machine. You don't know the behavior of the real world. And for this reason, you, your quality of your simulation um, has some lags um, you actually don't want to have. So, what if simulation data is used automatically in doing the parts data phase? What if the machine delivers the measurement data and you can use it for optimization in your simulation? Or what if the simulation takes into account the machine behavior to increase your simulation quality? All those what if I want to try to answer during the next minutes. But one main thing, one main idea is always in focus. Try to close this loop of information um, by generating and eliminating um, those gaps of data. What's our way? Where do we come from? You know, Engel is one of the leading plastic machine and manufacturing and we offer our customers injection molding machines for all um, kinds of application or technologies. You can do everything, um, every injection molding product with our machine. We always focus on technology. We are, have a history of 75 years, always want to be one step ahead. Um, just pointing out some key figures about Angle, because I don't know if everybody of you knows Angle. Angle is, is a company, a family-owned company, which was founded in 1945 by Ludwig Engel. Um, and it's still 100% family-owned business in now in the fourth generation. The great-grandson of Ludwig Engel is our CEO at the moment. Um, we have about six, six and a half thousand employees worldwide and have a turnover of about 1.3 billion um, euro um, and invest about 70 million euro for R&D each year. Our way started 1945. The company was founded by Mr. Um, Mr. Engel here in Schwertberg, where I'm sitting at the moment, and was um, built the first injection molding machines in the early 50s, 1951. Mr. and Mrs. Schwarz handed over and took over the, the company in the 60s where we burst our, built our first electrical control unit in the 60s, 1967. Presented the first smart machine cell on the Keijo during the 80s and had big innovations um, with the first tableless machine um, 20, um, um, 25 years ago or nearly 30, 30 years ago, and the large tonnage machine with um, 1995. Mr. Neumann and now Mr. Engleder are part of the, um, the family and have been our CEOs over several years. 2016, we introduced our Inject 4.0 framework for as industry 4.0 solution for the injection molding business. And Simlink is one answer for this for these solutions. Inject 4.0. We 
split up the Inject 4.0 framework in three main things. The smart machine, the smart service and the smart production. The smart machine increases process stability with assistant system, with smart solutions. Smart service increases the availability of the machines. And smart production increases the productivity and linking all steps during the production and design phase. And that's where Simlink, where our product lifecycle management tool is part of the smart production, where we connect the virtual world and the real world. To point out what's Simlink. Simlink is a software which links the mold flow simulation to the real machine. Simlink is a software in our customer um, portal um, and combines those informations in the two worlds. But what does it do actually? Imagine you do some simulation and some optimization and get the best setting out of the, um, the simulation in Autodesk Moldflow. You just press one button and export all this data, all these settings to a data set we can just be imported into the angle machine without any printout reports or um, some data sheets. You just can export the data set of the machine. The second function is the modify function. In your simulation, we can take into account the, um, the behavior of the concrete machine you want to use for your optimization, for your production, for your setup phase. So you can already um, take in the simulation, the behavior of the machine into account. And the last but not least step is the import function. You can do some measurements on the machine and can import this data with only one click into the Autodesk mold flow and compare the data, for example, or you can use it as input data, for example, the volume flow in order to increase the quality of your simulation. And those functions bring the virtual world and the real world together. Let's try or look at an example. On the left hand side, you can see in orange, of course, in the, um, the, the colors of um, Autodesk mold flow today, um, you can see a velocity profile for a simulation of a part. Um, maybe an optimized part. Um, you already optimized it in simulation. That's a, um, a part of a real simulation we did in our um, customer application center. This velocity profile results in some tr pressure traces in the simulation. This velocity profile, you can export in such a way that you can direct um, import it onto the machine. So we recalculate the profile. We, um, for example, we have to recalculate it not in, 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 in velocity to time. We have to recalculate it to um, flow to volume as, a, as, a, um, as an example. And we, and we recalculated that you can automatically put it onto the machine. Then as a next step, you can compare the simulated and the current flow directly um, in, in each other. You don't have to do some recalculation, you can just see it in, in each other. And the next step is you import those measurement data into the simulation. You don't comparison, you can increase the quality, you can do some, some iterations for some optimizations, and you can optimize your simulation. What is the benefit now of closing this loop? You can first of all transfer all the simulation expertise and know-how directly from the virtual world and what you did in your mind directly into the production phase in the real world. But nevertheless, you can also increase the quality of your daily work in the simulation. 
You can optimize your simulation by the import function. And the people in the, in the production um, site reduces their startup time because they can, they can use data, they can use optimized data already from the simulation. And a very important point, the Simlink not only brings the data together, it brings the people together, it gives, gives you the possibility to commonly discuss and collaborate in a better way with the real world, with the machine. So, what's the main thing? Just close the loop. Start this process in the minds of your company, closing the loop between virtual world and real world with or without Angle Simlink, but just take the first step, look at the potentials and close the loop. Thank you very much for your attention and many greetings from Engel, Austria, here in Schwerpe in our headquarters. Thank you.